1994, Betty was living in Portland, Oregon, a Portland early in its journey to becoming a national draw. In the middle of a population boom that would see a 20% increase in the state's residents by the turn of the century, Oregon, to many Americans, was still best known as the frontier destination of Lewis and Clark. It was still typified by a former governor's infamous directive to the rest of the nation, come visit us, but for heaven's sake, don't come here to live. It was still pronounced Oregon. Seven years and 2,455 miles away, the most famous terrorist attack in American history will occur. Air travel and security will change irrevocably in an instant, but in 1994, Betty is armed only with a dish rag coated in crusted ketchup and a Lysol spray bottle, listening to a KOPB reporter relay the State Department's travel alert for potential terrorist activity at Newark Airport. She turns off the radio and kneels to continue cleaning out the refrigerator, but unease sets in. She seeks solace in living in the relative middle of nowhere, thinking, most Americans don't know even how to pronounce my state's name. Not a likely target for foreign terrorists. Only then, of course, did her upcoming visit to her mother-in-law's home in Newark, New Jersey, worm its way to the front of her mind. With a sense of impending disappointment similar to opening a CD-shaped birthday gift to discover that it does, in fact, contain a CD, she called United Airlines. And she was met with all the understanding and flexibility we cherish in corporate customer service. Yes, there are charges. Yes, it's more expensive to fly into White Plains than Newark. Yes, you did that math correctly. It will cost $800. No, we don't waive fees for State Department travel alerts. No, and I'm afraid I don't control the policy, but I would be happy to transfer you to corporate headquarters. And this is where our hero, alone in the Pacific Northwest, struggling against the insurmountable obstacles of fearing what cannot be controlled and squeezing empathy out of corporate policy, gains an ally. In Chicago, Illinois, incidentally where Betty was born and raised, United Airlines Vice President of Customer Service considered the post-it note on his desk with the 503 area code phone number and punched it in. The ringing phone calls Betty away from a refrigerator that is now 60% of the way to spotless, and she picks up a call from who she assumes is the human embodiment of corporate policy. After a brief reiteration of the particulars, she's met by a question that would invariably result in the termination of any common customer service representative. Ma'am, are you religious? Now I'll retell it in her exact phrasing. He was crossing a line, and I wasn't sure where this was leading. Why do you want to know? Because what we're talking about here is fate. Betty, have you ever read The Bridge of San Luis Rey? No, but I've always wanted to. You must, he said. It's all about fate, about what brings five different people to the middle of a bridge in Peru at the precise moment that it collapses. You have to read that book. One of my favorite memories is of my mother reading it to me as a child. Now, look, I'm going to let you change your flight. I'll waive the reticketing fee. I'll even waive the increased fare in and out of White Plains. But I'm hoping you won't take me up on it. Listen, if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. What if you change your flights and you fly into White Plains and you rent the car? You'll have to cross the Tappan Zee Bridge. What if there's a bomb on the bridge? Or say your rental car gets a flat. Some guy stops posing as a good Samaritan and kills you all. I mean, anything can happen, but Betty, you've got to live your life. You can't outwit fate. Betty was a worrier by nature, her father more so, his mother most so. But in this moment, from this unexpected messenger, came a message that changed her approach to life. It's been over a quarter century since that phone call. In 26 years, her children have grown, the world has changed, and fear has clutched her heart innumerable times. But at each turn, you can't outwit fate, has guided Betty's decision-making to allow room in her life, in her loved one's lives, to take the inevitable risks in stride. I was particularly struck by this story's sense of legacy. Betty could look across her family line and identify the harm in a past, present, and future of fretting. 1,700 miles away, a United Airlines executive could see the same, could find a lesson from his own mother in his own childhood about our place in this world, about the times that we are given and the risks that they dictate to us. Two families, entirely separate from one another, sharing a single human truth in the face of a chaotic and intractable world. It's those little moments, the stories and understandings between everyday folks that offer a sense of calm and control against all these crazy odds. 
Happy Wednesday, Quilt family.